Hi and welcome to this new video today. In this video, I will draw a green blurry background for a squirrel portrait. I have drawn this squirrel with pumpkin as a drawing lesson in my membership animal art club in my drawing school. I teach my students there how to draw realistic life like animal portraits with puzzles. You can find the full drawing lesson about the squirrel with the pumpkin and some autumn leaves inside of the club. If you're interested to join, I invite you to join the waitlist below in the description. You will then be informed when the doors will open again. And now let's dive in and let's draw a beautiful green blurry background. Okay, now we are drawing the yellowish greenish background. I have decided to do it this time with Rembrandt soft pastel sticks. I have here some out of a set, uh, they are called um, portrait selection. So out of a portrait selection of 30 sticks. I have chosen here these colors and also the black. Uh, and a piece of a schminke white and one, yes, I think that's enough. So schminke white, a very soft pastel stick for brightening the yellow up. And yes, the black 700.5 uh, the black. And then these colors we will use the yellow 205 it's called light yellow so Rembrandt from Royal Talents then I have chosen here such an ochre the number is 277.5 the name is yellow ochre then a dark green 625, a olive green and a very light green, it's like the May green in the pit pastel pencils, a yellowish green, 633.5. The name of this soft pastel stick is, let's have a look, permanent yellowish green. And then I have chosen here raw ember. You see here raw ember and the number is 408.7. 408.7. The Rembrandt sticks have so numbers. There are lots of different shades available. And a an gold ochre, so a orangey brown 231.7. We will use these soft pastel sticks, so I try to draw the background with the soft pastels. If you only have your pencils, then work with them. I will include in the material list then some similar colors out of the pencil sets too, so that you then can work with your pastel pencils. Or if you have pen pastels, then use them in similar colors and do the background with pen pastels. Let's do it here with the Rembrandt soft pastel sticks. So I start here in the middle where the background is a bit more yellowish, so I start with a lighter color. Let's uh, use the yellow here and I go here over in so circles and plot in a bit of the yellow pastel pigment. And what I always love to do is to use this schminke white because it's so soft and also mix it in here. It's so soft, it has a really high color abrasion and there is a lot of pastel pigment on the paper immediately. So I then blend it here in so circles and then add again more pigment with the yellow. 
If you are a beginner or just starting out to draw with pastel pencils, I have created a beginner's guide for you. If you have a look in the description below, you can find a link to grab this beginner's guide. It's totally free. It's a PDF with some tips and tricks for your start with pastel pencils. You can also use for blending some sponges so that um, it's always a little bit uh, difficult or it can happen that you bring oil or some yes, so oily and waxy pigment from your fingers on your portrait. To avoid that it's, um, it's good to use gloves or to use some paper towels over your finger or to use sponge sponges. I just do it here with the fingers. When we when you do commissions, perhaps the safe way is to use gloves so that you no, don't bring any oil on your portraits. Okay, so here plotting in a bit of white and a bit of the yellow color. And then I also add the golden ochre. So bring in here golden ochre. I just try to apply the pigment here in so circles and blend the layers, mix the colors together. That's such a great thing of the pastels so that they, we can mix them easily. So I go over here in circles and mix the pigments into, into each other. For backgrounds I don't use um, the paper stamps because then you have so uh, strokes on the background. That's not so so good. I would like a, a smooth surface but you can try to go over with a tissue and blend these layers together. Then you also have not so much dust on your finger. But I really, for smooth areas, I prefer the finger itself. You can also work with your cotton swabs a bit to make these transitions here smoother. That works well. But for the bigger areas, for me, the finger really works the best. You can wear gloves then. It should be also good. Then near the squirrel here I plot in a green. So it's here this uh, olive green. We have to do then our little hairs again. So near the squirrel and here below. Let's plot in here the olive green it's a nice middle green here in the set of rembrandt not so dark plot that in along the the pumpkin here too between pumpkin and squirrel i go in here with the rembrandt soft pastel stick and then near the squirrel I would blend it with the paper stamp. Near the squirrel the fingers are too broad, too big. So there and along our drawings, our pumpkin here, I would always blend with the paper stamp. And then in the middle here we can use the finger or here above. Everywhere where it's um, not so much space to work with finger. Use here the cotton swab for example and blend these layers together. Blend yellow and green here. So I blend here the green into the yellow with the cotton swab. Also go over here, blow away some loose pastel pigments. But with this broader part of these special cotton swabs that really works well at blending the colors. Here we can also mix green and yellow and go over the, the two different colors here with the cotton swab and add 
and and mix these layers together here. Um, yes, let's also bring in a raw ember here near the pumpkin a bit or darken that part down here with black. So to mix a darker green and go over once more with green here over the black and then mix these colors together. So mix green and black and then it's here a little bit darker. We can also mix in a bit of a, a gold ochre, such an orangey color here a little bit and then blend it again. You can try to mix your own colors with your soft pastel sticks. So there is now a lot of pigment on the paper. Drawing lines would be a little bit difficult, but we won't draw over this uh, blurry background anymore. So that's uh, here. Uh, we wish that there is lots of pigment on the paper. Then work again here with ochre and with yellow. Here in the middle I also plot in a little bit of the golden ochre and blend it again. Blend it again so that we have here a little bit of the golden ochre too. Perhaps brighten up that part with white here a bit and go over then once more with golden ochre. Color that a bit yellowish. Yes, so that here this is a little bit lighter. Then blend green over it again. So when you do these blurry backgrounds you can try things out and play a little bit around and and try out how colors work and how the color mixing process is working. Yes, and then let's go here upwards and blend the yellow a bit with the green again or add another layer of yellow here over it and blend it downwards. You always can add another layer and then blend it again. Try uh, that you blend them well so that there are no strokes visible. Or here I added the golden ochre too a little bit. And then go over and mix the layers again. Here we can bring in the white a bit and mix it into the yellow. And near the squirrel I use again the cotton swab plot of the golden ochre a little bit nearer to the squirrel. And here above going over the white part here in circles mix white with green a bit. And again I'm going over with the finger a bit so that it's here is nice smooth transition or blend here the golden oak a little bit to, to the right. Yes, yeah, so then let's work here on the left side. Here I would do more with the green. Also bringing the green a little bit here between. So let's do here the first base layer with a lot of green pigment. So plot in the olive green here. It really doesn't look nice at this stage. Just plot in here a lot of the green pigment over the left side here. Be careful here uh, along your pumpkin. Yes, and here downwards I would bring in a little bit of the golden ochre between and a little bit of this um, gold ochre, gold ochre, oh. yellow ochre. So this is yellow ochre and this is gold, gold ochre, the orangey ochre. And then blend it again, blend the whole layer here. 
with the green. We will plot in then more yellow here above. So I go over it once here with the finger in big circles. And then let's plot in here above the, the yellow ochre. The yellow ochre here too in so little circles between the green. So that we have here this ochre color in there too. So I plot in the yellow ochre in so circles. And perhaps a bit of the gold ochre here above too. We could then use a burnt sienna or something like that to bring in a little bit of brown. I didn't choose the color first, but we can also add here some colored pencils then too. Perhaps, for example, use the 283 of the warm. Um, the burnt sienna you have used here in your portrait and also bring in here a little bit brown. That's also possible that you combine your soft puzzle sticks and your pencils and bring in here some different colors you have used in the squirrel or here bringing in a bit of the brown. That looks nice so you can really be here a bit creative and 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 yes create your own background when you have the feeling you cannot blend the layers anymore then add more of the pigment add again a layer of olive green here some round circles of olive green the more pigment you have on the uh, drawing paper the better you can then blend them So add another layer of olive green and then two of the light ochre. Bringing in here more light ochre. Perhaps also a little bit yellow here. We will blend then that then, no worry. The strokes should then disappear. So I bring in here a little bit of the ochre. Here we have to go over it once more and blend all the layers well. Let's use our cotton swab here for blending. Going over in the circles. Here let's plot in once more yellow in a bigger ball so that there are no strokes visible when there is too less pigment on the paper then you cannot blend it then you have uh, strokes so now it's working better the same here we need more pigment not lines working so areas working bigger balls or stains and then blend this here, blend it here together, let the layers go into each other so that the green is going over the light ochre and over the yellow. Here, blend it together. Then let's add again a little bit of yellow. I would also bring in here a thin, some thin layers of white and brighten some parts up here. Yes. Then near uh, the pumpkin, let's blend this uh, with the papers, uh, with the cotton swab here. With the smaller cotton swab, also blend the green upwards a bit here. So going along the pumpkin here and blend the background color. Yes, 
nice and bring it here upwards a bit, mix the layers again. Here, let's bring in uh, the ochre once more and blend it upwards. Then I use here uh, the, the, the paper, the <laughs> cotton swab I wanted to say again. And blend it here with the cotton swab. What we also can do is to use 103 of the ivory and bring in a little bit of ivory pigment. Okay, here we have to, to be careful. When there is a lot of, like here, schminke pigment on it, it's not working. But on the green base layer, you can bring in with a, a harder pencil, so highlights and brighten some green um, parts up a bit like here so when you have a lot of white on your paper then you see this um, background starts to smear but like here when it's not so much pigment on it then you can work with pencils and add some some details or highlights to in the background Let's then uh, bring in again a bit of the green here, darkening it down a little bit between the lighter parts and blend it, blend it again. Do a next layer when you have the feeling it's not working anymore, the blending process. Yes, and so going over in so little circles and when there are lines, go over once more and add a bit of the green pigment. And blend it into the surroundings. So you can play around until all your background is filled up with nice blurry background colors. Near the bumpkin, let's blend it again. Here is paper color visible. Here I blend the ochre once more a bit with the, the green. Okay, here above perhaps once more or here at the edges also. There I plot in a little bit of yellow. And go over here once more with the finger and blend it or let's use uh, the brown here a bit and bring in that 283 bring in a bit of burnt sienna here and also a, la a thin layer of the golden ochre here and there plot in a little bit of golden ochre here too and mix golden ochre with burnt sienna a bit the burns the in a pastel pigment, a uh, pastel pencil. Yes, and go over again and blend these little color spots here. Blend them again together. Okay. I want to go in once more with the 283 here a bit, bringing again a little bit more of the, the burnt sienna. You can easily blend that, then add a pigment and blend it here between. Mix it with the green or add here a little bit and blend it into the surroundings. So here you can really combine the colors, work a bit with the brown here too, and blend it. Also here, let's plot in a bit of the burnt sienna. What also could look nice is the sanguine, so that we Use the 188, the sanguine. So it's here, 188, as we have used here in the squirrel. 
and plot a little bit of orange color in. So I didn't have a soft pastel stick here when I started, but most times I like to decide uh, colors during the drawing process. You will see when you draw your own portraits, um, especially here in backgrounds, you can be really creative and try something out, bring in your own artistic style, perhaps your own colors, what colors do you like for the best background. And if then there are colors missing, then add one you have. You can add all the colors out of the squirrel portrait, try out and go over it again if you don't like it and blend it again. So here is it. it it's not uh, such a big problem when the paper is saturated when you just do a blurry background because you don't have to draw strokes over it then or details. Um, let's go in a little bit with white then once more. So I add here a bit of white, the Schmincke white, and blend it again. And then I can up, so I can bring in highlights and make the, the blurry background a little bit lighter. It's not white then. It's a mixture of of green and, and ochre here too brighten that up or go go over with the ivory once more okay you see here ivory is not working here at this part but here it's working well here it's not so saturated you see when there is a lot of pigment with the schminke on the portrait ivory is not working it's a nice demonstration here but here where I only have applied the green and a bit of oak of the Rembrandt's ivory showing up really well. So that's funny. But you see when there is a lot of pigment on your paper then it starts to smear when you work with pencils. But it's no problem because uh, I won't draw over that. It would not be possible to draw over that part anymore with the pastel pencils. The only uh, thing would be to spray it with a fixative. Then all these pastel pigments would be fixed on the paper. They will darken down. Uh, but you could then draw over it if you need it. If you would, if you have to draw some, some details over it. So I mix here the ivory into a bit here, into the orangey ochre part here and blend it. Okay. Perhaps let's also bring a thin layer of black here at the edges, not too much, just a bit to darken down the edges here. Mix the black with the green. It should only be then a, a darker green, not really black. So here mix the black with the, the green. It should just darken down the green layer. Bring that in here a little bit to the right. Going over so you now you see it's darker green now. There is nothing to see of black anymore. We have mixed with the black pigments with the greens and now we have here a darker transition. I then go over with the yellow again to the left and plot the yellow or mix the yellow over the green once more and a little bit upwards. Okay. Yes, then here below let's do green so near the leaves. Let's plot in the olive green here. Be careful here near the pumpkin and near the drawing of the leaves so that we don't overdraw it. And here between pumpkin and squirrel I also fill up that space here with the green. Here we have done to draw the fine little hairs once more. Okay, then blend that. 
blend the green here upwards into the ochre part. And here too, blend it a little bit. Then use the cotton swab near our drawing, near the portrait. Near the portrait you could also use the paper stamper, I, but I might have experienced that there are always then so strokes uh, visible, so the better will work here as sponge or these cotton swabs. Here to blend the green. Okay, blend the green a little bit upwards. So then add the light ochre. I add also here a bit of the light ochre and blend it. Blend the light ochre and then add. Here I would also go in with black. So here near the pumpkin and here below. Let's darken down the background here a bit. It can be darker here. Plotting in a little bit of black and also here. So mix a darker green. Then use the cotton swab here for mixing. It's so a small space, not so, um, it's not possible to use the finger here near the pumpkin. Here we have really to be careful that we don't plot the black over our pumpkin and squirrel here over the white fur. In the middle we can work with the finger, push the pigment into the paper. Here near the pumpkin I use now the paper stamp because here I need a really sharp point to blend that. So when it's really small and narrow the paper stamp works best for blending. Blend the black here with the green that there are no stripes then anymore. <sighs> Blowing away a uh, loose pigment a bit. Then let's add another layer of the olive green here so that it's not too dark. Bringing green color. And blend it again with the cotton swab or add a bit of the ochre here in the middle and blend it again just bringing in here different colors blend it with the cotton swab once more okay then also here we have to blend the black going over with the cotton swab and blend the black into the green or then with the paper stamp here where it's really small a small area go around that leaf with the paper stamp and also here upwards near the pumpkin. The best is a small thin paper stamp here. Blend the transitions between green and black here. Also here we can go over it once more with the a paper stamp and make these transitions smoother. Go along the pumpkin once more. Okay, perhaps add another layer of the, the ochre here. Brighten that up a bit with lighter autumn colors or also a little bit of the 
golden ochre and plot in a little bit of such an orangey ochre and use also a little bit of our burnt sienna bringing some brown and also sanguine 181 Bring in some orangey browns. That's always nice here near the pumpkin. Um, go with the brown a little bit nearer to the pumpkin here. So that it's not framed, just framed with green. Yes, and then blend it here once more. Going over gently and blend this, this areas together. Okay. Near above, I'm going over once more. So yes, play around a little bit. What looks best, perhaps let's also go in here between a bit with sanguine, bringing in here. A little bit of sanguine and blend it or also here above the pumpkin we can bring in a bit of sanguine too so really work around the squirrel what is working best I use a new cotton swab when it's too full of pigment it's not working anymore the nice blending process so if they are too full of pigment, change them. Yes, and blend here near the squirrel too. Okay. And then let's do the rest. Um, I have also chosen before this uh, green here, this permanent yellowish green. Let's pop that, map that in here too a bit. It's a nice green color. Let's bring that in too in our background here above. It's a nice greenish color, a may green. Bring in here that brilliant green or here sometimes and then blend it. It's also a nice color. Then use uh, the yellow again here around the squirrel. Here we have then to draw all the fine details too. Here we could also mix in that, uh, what's the name? Permanent yellowish green. And this beautiful light green and blend it a bit together with the yellow and then near the squirrel I would use more of the olive green here and bring in here the olive green around the squirrel so that it's here darker also here where we have this uh, beautiful uh, tail, this fluffy tail, bring in the olive green and then blend it. Blend it here with the finger. I always work here in so circles and push the pigment in the paper, use more pressure when um, I have the feeling it's not working the process, the blending process and when uh, the colors are not mixing that it then it is a sign that you have to add more pigment and then like here it's a smooth feeling colors are mixing together easily then it's working better and with the schminke it's really very smeary and smudgy and everything is so, um, the mixing process is working really really well but we have also a lot of pigment here then on the paper 
So near the squirrel, let's use uh, the blending stamp, the paper stamp here. Here it's very narrow and we have only small space. So here I work with the paper stamp. <sighs> Blend the background here. We have tend to draw these fine fluffy hairs, these long hairs over the background here above again. We have to do that then finally. Here pl uh, blend the green things into our tail so that there is green also between the hairs. We have to plot that in here and then we have to overdraw the fine ends. Use then the cotton swab here for blending. Okay, I go over here once more with the finger and then bring in a little bit of the light ochre here. So this yellowish ochre and blend it. Also go over with the yellowish ochre here a little bit and blend it. Just bringing in some different layers of pigment and blend them together. <sighs> then let's go again with the olive green here near our tail and bringing the green a little bit in between the hairs here. Also work with the green a little bit upwards and then here around the tail and here plotting in a little bit of the olive green and then here above a little bit of the golden ochre and of the light ochre, the more yellowish ochre here and a little bit of the yellow too, our brilliant yellow and then blend it here. I'm going over with the finger first. So here the blending process is working. When there is more pigment on the paper it's working. Here is too less pigment at that stage so it's not smearing. I have to add more layers there and then let's use here again uh, the paper stamp and bring in here a bit of green between the hairs, between the fine fluffy hairs. And blend again. Let's add more of the ochre pigment here. Going over with the ochre, the light ochre, the yellowish ochre and start blending again. And then let's use the green once more and add another layer of green or plot in a little bit of the, the go, uh, yes, golden ochre or also bring in a bit of the burnt sienna 283, the bustle pigment and then blend it again. Here, blend it in circles. Blend the layers together. Okay, use a, a cotton swab once more and go over here, blend this. I use the clean one, then it's working better. 
near blend also here the layers near the tail so that we have here a smooth background then where we can let these fine fluffy hairs overlap and blend here in so little circles Also here I'm going over once more that everywhere these transitions are really smooth and then I blend it once more again with the finger. When you go over with the cotton swab then you have here loose pigment everywhere. You remove a little bit but I push it into the paper then again with the finger just blend it here. Let's use a little bit of the orange, the sanguine too. I want here to bring in a little bit of the sanguine color too. And blend it so that it's only an area and not strokes or stripes. The same let's do with the sanguine. And again blend that. Adding here a little bit of the pigment and blend it. Okay. Perhaps let's add a bit of the ochre once more, the light ochre here above or here. Some of these light ochre stains and blend it again. So you can really play around here and add different pigment layers. So here now it's nice and going into these autumn colors. Perhaps bring a little highlight in here with the schminke white and brighten this part here up a bit. There is light shining through the trees or whatever that is in the background. The bushes. and then let's work here down what's here let's use um, the ochre as a base layer the light ochre so I go plotting in here a lot of the light ochre pigment and then also some raw ember this one here it's such a greenish brown Let's bring that in here and blend this first layer. Push the pigment in the paper and bring it all over the drawing surface. Let's use here the cotton swab. Blend the ochre and also blend the ochre near the tail here. Here these overlapping hairs we have then also to draw again. Blend it here towards the tail. I use here the cotton swab again. And also mix the green pigment a little bit into that base layer that I have on the cotton swab. So I go here with the color a little bit between the hairs. It's really a little bit brown between. I want here that background color between the hairs and blend it here also near the leaves. And here. Okay. Then let's add other colors. Let's work a bit here below with our olive green too. And mix in black so that it's here darker below like on the left side. Now we're darkening this down here a bit. 
So blending here the black and mix the black then with the green. Blend the black with the green. So I mix them with the finger and blend them upwards here over the and the raw ember part. Or we need the paper stamp here near near the the hairs of the tail and near the leaves here. That it's better to use the paper stamp. Drawing here around that leaves, our autumn leaves, and then going over with the finger here once more in so circles and make that area here smoother. Let's also uh, use the golden oak a bit, bring it here downwards and then blend it again. Or use a little bit of sanguine, the pastel pencil 188 and plot that in. That's also working well. When you just have your pastel pencils then you have to apply more pigment for the beginning. You need more time, you have to be more patient to build up your layers. But it's definitely working too. You will need more of your pigment of the pencils. The pencils will become short quickly, but perhaps you invest then some time into soft pastel sticks or you have already one, then you can create a blurry background easily with the soft pastel sticks. You don't have to use Rembrandts, you can also work with. Other brands like, um, yes, the Schminke are really very, very soft. There you have to be careful that you don't <laughs> saturate your paper too much, especially near the portrait where you would like then to draw these fine overlapping hairs over it. Or you can use pan pastels, of course. You can use unison color. They are also very, very soft and have... A, have a huge color range, so many different color shades. In my opinion, it's not necessary to have so many color shades of soft puzzle sticks. You can mix the colors and I love it better. Also, I pr prefer it to, to mix colors and create my own colors. I don't want to invest in a, a huge a color palette of unison color soft pastel sticks. They are very very cool high quality. They are amazing but some important colors uh, are enough I think. Or you can use yes every brand other brand Carandage or also Sennelier. So use your brand you have of soft pastel sticks. Let's use a white once more a bit and bring in here with the schminke a little bit of white. Now it's really bright and brilliant and white and shining, but I mix it into the ochre and then it's a creamy yellow and it's really fun to blend the edges of this little white stain and and bring in the white schminke here into our background background uh, drawing so the painting this is painting I would say the animal and the pumpkin and the leaves are drawing and when you work in bigger areas and just blend and mix colors then it's more painting with pastels okay cool I think that looks not so bad Perhaps let's do here and there some, some additional layers. So here I would add a bit of more green so that it, here that, that part don't look so like a, a framing line. Let's bring in here a bit more of the green. Blend it here upwards and to the right. Okay. 
also here here blend it a bit I just do some corrections where we could add something perhaps let's add here a little bit of white and bring in a lighter color or plot in a little bit of sanguine here too so that we have here a shimmer of orange or also here around the ears bring in a little bit of orange here between here we have to work with the paper stamp blend it in little circles or here blend, I blend this green a little bit more here that it's a little bit broader and it's going here in some different directions okay blend it here a bit yes and so you can really play around with your colors you have and create such a blurry background so I go over here perhaps let's add here a bit more of yellow perhaps let's also map in here a bit of the yellow on our right side here and bring in some of the shiny yellow colors so that's also nice when we have here a bit more of the brilliant yellow and mix it with the ochre and if it's too brilliant go over with light ochre once more and add another layer with light ochre and change it so darken it down or change it so you can play around a bit, add some pigment and then blend it again, add some pigment and blend it again so that can be really fun. Also here on the ochre area use more ochre, light ochre pigment and brighten it up a bit or add here a bit of the ochre and just bring in some light ochre here over the light area here okay and so you can invest more time if you want and yes refine your background really work on it until you're satisfied until you're really happy with the background okay cool here I will map in a little bit of brown once more, just bring in a little bit of darker color in here too, or a little bit of sanguine. So blend it again. That we have here also some different colors in there. <sighs> okay. So perhaps I go over this right part here once more with the, the cotton swab and blend the black a bit. So that's here not just such a line. This I would also correct with a black pastel pencil. So when we have here such a framing line around, plot in a bit of black pigment into your background and then blend it so that it's not a black line around the leaves that's more these more are areas and so bigger areas and not just strokes here now it's look it looks better yes and then finally let's do all the details around pumpkin and the squirrel okay then let's draw all the details so I would use here now the 102 the cream and draw along the edges of our pumpkin here once more on the left side so that we have here a straight outline perhaps you brought some pigment of the background over it so just 
draw over the outline with the cream here also here below and the same let's do the same here on the right side it should be sharp so also go over the right edge here with a sharp cream and blend it a bit or also with so if you have to correct something go over with the 186 here of the terracotta once more and add a little bit of orangey color and then finally go over with a sharp ivory add here a highlight line and some details again yes also here along the edges draw along them when you have brought green pigment over them here going over that part and then also over this I go over this with the ivory just create here a straight line you can move the pencil forwards and backwards so that you have your straight edges and here we did it already with the cream you can add ivory too and bring in another highlight and blend it a bit into the middle towards the right okay <clears throat> perhaps go over gently with your paper stamp or with a cotton swab so that you remove all the the grit or all the gritty little dots if there are some okay we can also draw over this middle lines here once more with the sanguine a bit okay yes and then let's have a look on our stem um, it's not not so bad perhaps draw along the edges too so just check every outline if it's okay if it's straight otherwise draw along here above I add again these lines these lighter parts with the ivory or here and there so little things and a light line here on the left no but it's okay and then let's uh, work on the square rail and here here below I also draw an outline of the wood so and then let's draw the square rail let's start here so we don't have any overlapping white hairs here anymore so I use here the ivory and draw some of these fine fluffy hairs to the left. Let them the overlap over our green background. So that it's really important that you do that uh, refine work then finally before you finish the portrait that you have all these fine fluffy overlapping hairs here that are here going in all directions and overlapping the background that makes really a realistic portrait uh, then at the end so it's really important that you don't forget to, to draw over the edges and refine all the fine details if you have drawn a background so that it's definitely worth all the time you invest then in that final stage also here over the hand over the the leg the front leg 
let's uh, draw some of these fine hairs let's use then 186 here the terracotta to draw some brown hairs and let them here overlap so that they are overlapping also correct some things here and there and if there are some things missing on your squirrel draw them here in two then let's use the ivory once more here we have some light overlapping fine hairs also on the hand or on the paw here draw some of these overlapping fine little little uh, hairs of the fur and we also have whiskers to draw this little squirrel has whiskers so bring in here the whiskers to the left with the ivory you can also use white but the ivory is also showing up here really well and then draw them also here to the left so we have here so let's first refine the chin part here I also let here some fine hairs overlap over the background and we have here so very fine thin whiskers too and here some fine little teeny tiny hairs here is one let's then sharpen uh, the ivory so that is that we have a really sharp point and then draw here these long whiskers here let's uh, say they, they are growing out here at this black dots at the front part they are more black and then they have a light reflection uh, on them and are shining so more white and ivory colors it's like whiskers of cats drawing here the lines towards the right and here once more and here once more and then ha we have here so fine fluffy overlapping hairs that are crossing the background okay here we also have some overlapping hairs on the chin and add here some more overlapping little things then let's use a very sharp black and draw here along the whiskers the black part of that fine hair so I sharpen the black that we have really a very sharp point okay and with this sharp black let's start here at this little dots here make them a little bit darker so the lines are growing out here and the first part of the whiskers are the darker black ones so make them darker here darkening them down here the first the first uh, part here the left part of the whiskers okay perhaps another one here downwards and perhaps let's darken down on the mouth here a bit bringing in more contrast here so and also here the nose bring in a bit of black hairs and draw over the eyes so that it's really black often there is pastel pigment on it then finally and add here some details we also have to draw some fine overlapping fluffy hairs on the ears here above 
and then these fine uh, long hairs. Uh, use here a little bit of the ivory. Let's go along the face here. Bring in some fine overlapping fluffy hairs and then draw all these fine hairs here upwards here over the background. Some are going more to the left. Here we have here really lots of these fine fluffy little hairs that are going here to the back and also the second one here. So bunches of long hairs here. Don't forget to draw them. They are really important. So typically for this squirrel. And here we also have long fine hairs here that are going to the left. Draw them here over the background. Make sure that your uh, pencil is sharp. Let them overlap here. We also need the terracotta here. So uh, some orangey color bring in here with terracotta 186 uh, orangey color. Going over the lower part here with the terracotta so that it's more orangey and bringing in here the terracotta color over these fine hairs. Here we can also work with the knife and scratch in here some fine strokes too. And then go over it with the ivory again. With the sharp ivory. Bringing in here these long overlapping fluffy hairs upwards. Let them here overlap. Also here we need some more back to the right and also between the ears here. They are starting here at the left part of the ear. You can also use a very sharp graphite pencil a bit. So a, a hard graphite pencil and add some fine thin strokes here. Some darker strokes that's also working finally for refining or use uh, then a sharp white. So let's work with white then finally. So use a very sharp white and add so fine white curly hairs. Oh wait, they are not straight. They make waves. They have so little waves. They are cur not curly but wavy. So not straight. Draw wavy lines. The same here. Let them overlap over the background and add some white hairs so that they have more light reflections in there. Yes, and yes, and then let's go here to the right. Add with white here some highlights and details. And then let's work on our tail and add all these fine fluffy overlapping hairs. Here I would first work with 186 the terracotta too or use the burnt ochre, so an orangey color. And add here some of the some of the uh, orangey hairs. They are going in all directions. Some are then going together to clump, some are going to the left, some are going to the right, so draw some so overlapping orangey terracotta colored hairs. We need here more layers, so some of these terracotta colored layers, then uh, some hairs with a lighter yellow like 109 with our dark chrome yellow. 
So add here also some yellow strokes that are here going over the background. Here also make some of these little uh, lines that are a little bit wavy and going to the right and going to the left. So change directions here too and then use uh, the light flash a bit and draw with 132 some light flash hairs over the background so that we have here different colors, different colors overlapping here in the background. Here bring some hairs with the light flesh. Let them cross here. Some are a little bit longer than two and some are really short. Yes, and then uh, work again with the ivory and let's add here ivory, ivory hairs that are crossing, that are going over the background, that are overlapping, some are a little curvy, so some make some curves, some are really, really small and thin. Use low pressure here for this overlapping fine thin hairs so don't press your pencil pencil just uh, pull it over the paper here and draw so fine fluffy overlapping hairs here some are going a bit to the left that can also be and change directions they cross they come together to little they meet, so the tips meet and come together and then they cross a little bit. Here I got the summer going down where it's all are overlapping the background. For some that you would like to draw some a little bit brighter, use a little bit more pressure. Okay, and let them here overlap. Perhaps we can also scratch in some lines here with the knife between. Draw or scratch in some darker lines between two here. Okay. Perhaps let's also go then over it with white and add some white highlights. Some white crossing lines. Also start more over, over the tail, so not always just draw the hairs that are here, these overlapping fluffy hairs. Also start over the tail and draw here and there some long lines that are overlapping then the background. So draw them here over the whole tail. Yes. Okay. Cool. And then let's do the same here at the right side. So here use and let's use 109 again. This dark chrome yellow and let here the tips of this orangey yellow part of the tail here overlap. Here below it's here the, the, the yellow lines are showing up better over the dark green. Let's add here these overlapping yellow lines, hairs, and then let's use the terracotta once more, or um, 186, and also let here some terracotta lines overlap, yes, and then the ivory ones vary not too much, so here use really low pressure so that uh, here the that hair is not so light. 
there are not so many light reflections in there, but some ivory highlights are always good to bring in contrast. Yes, and let them overlap. Okay, cool. I think we are now gone over the whole drawing. Uh, let's do the leaves once more with 192 the Indian red. So I sharpening the Indian red. That also the edges of the leaves are straight. So use 192 the Indian red uh, with a sharp point. And I go here once more over the edges of the leaves. Also, I also want that they are really straight if there is something to correct. Here it's good. So everywhere where you have added background or where the edges are not so straight or perhaps here where we have added the background that we go over these leaf edges once more so that they are really straight yes okay then I think so let's uh, have a look we have added the whiskers we have added all the details perhaps let's add here over the pumpkin once more a little bit of white I would brighten that part up here finally a little bit not too much if it's too light darken it down with terracotta so but I think perhaps let's blend this part with terracotta here gently I would add here a little bit of the orangey color no, but it's good so far, I think. And finally, um, I will sign this drawing. So let's add the signature here with a sharp. What color do we use? Let's use ivory. So and add a name and the year on your portrait. So I add here the name. Here, sign it. Signature is always important on your artwork. Okay. Yes, and so I've added now here a stroke that I don't like. <laughs> Let's remove it. Okay, great. So then finally, this portrait of this sweet squirrel uh, with the pumpkin and all our autumn leaves is finished. We have created an amazing colorful background too. So you can practice a lot of things in this tutorial or you have practiced a lot. You have practiced to work on red, orange, brown fur of the squirrel. You have drawn whiskers, fine fluffy hair. You have drawn uh, a pumpkin with all the little scratches and stains on the peel on the pumpkin skin. You have drawn a bit of wood. You have drawn colorful autumn leaves and also you have done then a background a blurry background so i hope you have enjoyed this drawing tutorial you had fun you had created you have created an amazing portrait and i really uh, i'm looking forward to your results uh, this time I have loved to work on this portrait for you and I really look forward to seeing your results and I hope you're proud of what you have created and I share it in our community. Show us your work and yes, have fun and see you soon. Okay, so I hope you liked this insight into one of my drawing lessons. You can find the full tutorial inside of Animal Art Club, my membership. 
If you are interested to join, you can find the link to the waitlist below in the description. Join the waitlist and you will be informed when the doors will open soon. Sometimes there are also bonuses or I open the club only to the waitlist. So join the waitlist and you will be the first who is informed. I hope I can welcome you in Animal Art Club. If you liked my channel here with my drawing tips, then click the subscribe button and I'm happy to welcome and see you in the next video. Enjoy your drawing time. If you have any questions, uh, post them below. I'm happy to answer your questions. Then I see you soon. Bye.